What happens when Mike Lowry and Marcus Burnett stop being bad boys and decide to become good men? For me, it was Tuesday. Welcome to another episode of For Me, It Was Tuesday. I am your host, GQ. Today we're going to be looking at Bad Boys for Life, a movie that came out earlier this year, and of course because of the pandemic, um... Actually, it's theatrical run. I don't think it was actually affected by the pandemic, but we're going to get into it. So, directed by Adil and Bilal, directorial team. Not quite brothers, I don't believe, but uh, similar to the Wachowskis in their filmmaking uh, style, kind of gritty, uh, down, down and dirty, actually, which is pretty cool. But, of course, it stars Will Smith, Martin Lawrence, Paula Nunez, Vanessa Hudgens, Jacob Sapio, Kate Del Castillo, and Joe Patalona. This movie was actually pretty cool. I did not expect them to revisit Bad Boys. Uh, it seemed like they were trying to get this particular sequel off the ground for years now. And when it came down to it, they did a pretty good job overall. Uh, let's be real, uh, the original movie came out in 1995, followed up uh, by Bad Boys 2 eight years later, I believe in 2003. So since the beginning, it's been 25 years since we've, you know, started this Bad Boys franchise. Now, in perspective, I think in storyline, it's been a 15 year gap somewhere in that range because you see um, Marcus's character, who's played by Will, I'm um, sorry, who's played by Martin Lawrence, he, his, uh, his daughter actually is getting married, having a baby, all that sort of thing. So we're essentially jumped forward some years. The funny thing about it is the movie starts off with what seems like a chase sequence. Of course it isn't. It's actually them trying to get to the hospital to see the uh, the birth of Marcus's grandbaby. And we actually run into the original actors who of course played his daughter and we run into the original actor that played Reggie who uh, of course got chewed out by both Martin and Will's characters um, when he was picking up Marcus's daughter for a date so they the directors actually and they mentioned this in the extras they actually found him through social media to make sure that they could get the exact same uh, guy to play Reggie which is really cool I thought that was a cool touch um, the movie itself is actually pretty straightforward um, I honestly really went into this movie just wondering okay how are they going to get these two back together or what is the story that they're going to tell and the story they come up with is actually fairly intriguing it's um digs up one of the demons uh in uh marcus not marcus in uh will smith's character mike lowry's past and brings it to the forefront and is you know essentially a tale of revenge coming from that side and uh kind of a mystery of like okay what is actually going on here and they start the movie off pretty strong. They really get right into it. They introduce a new character played by Jacob Sapio, who pretty outright, just an outright killer. Um, his introductory sequence, when we first find out about his skill set, is he's salvaging some money that his father, who was just recently deceased, and that's a complicated story in and of itself, uh, had hid some money essentially out just outside of Miami. They get it back and <laughs> the crew that uh, essentially did the salvage job for him wants a little bit more than the cut that they agreed upon. So he essentially takes that crew out and it's done in such a way that it's just like, okay, yeah, this guy's definitely a threat. And I, I love introductions like that for characters, especially if you're going to be trying to tell me or convince me that this person is dangerous or this person is going to be a uh, match for our you know hero characters in a story so they did a really good job introducing him uh, his mother is played by Kate de Castillo uh, they call her the La Bruja which of course uh, means the witch if for any of you that played Arkham Asylum uh, because that's what <laughs> that's what Payne refers to uh, I forgot who he refers to that as, but essentially it comes up. I think he refers to Poison Ivy as that. But anyway, getting back into this particular story, they did a really good job just kind of setting up all of the pieces and then just knocking the dominoes down. So the story is very straightforward, and I, I do appreciate that. And the comedy is on point. Martin and and uh, Will Smith have amazing chemistry in this film. And and they've, they've always had good chemistry, uh, even back from the beginning. 
And of course, now this one not being directed by Michael Bay, who of, of course did do the original Bad Boys, or the, actually the original two Bad Boys films. Uh, he does have actually have a cameo in this film, so that's actually pretty cool. The directors, again, uh, reached out to him and, and, you know, essentially wanted to include him because, again, Bad Boys is his baby. That was literally one of uh, Michael Bay's earliest films, and he put his own car in the film, the Porsche that they drive in that movie is Michael Bay's actual personal car. Um, so, I mean, it, you could see that it was, you know, at, at the time back then, it was kind of a shoestring budget thing and they were doing what they could to get things to work. So, it was really, I'm, I'm really glad to see how far the franchise has come. I really can't give too many details. So if you haven't seen the movie, just go ahead and check it out and see it. It is definitely worth a watch because if I give too much details about the story, that starts to really hint at the, wouldn't really so much, I guess it is kind of a small twist in the film as to who certain characters are. So I'm gonna leave it at that. I'm not really gonna dig into that too deep. Uh, of course, Joe Petzolano, I hope I'm saying his name right, but I think it might be Petzliano, is uh, back as Captain Howard. Um, still just as <laughs> upset with uh, the, the goings on of Mike Lowry and Marcus Burnett. Um, and he, again, he, he right back in the character. The dude is, he, he, the captain was always one of my favorite characters in the Bad Boy franchise, and and Joe brings it. Uh, he, he always did, but I mean, he, he brings it. I mean, I think my fa favorite iteration of him, honestly, was probably in, in Bad Boys 2 with, with the whole Wusa thing. That, that was, he was phenomenal in that film. But again, he brings it. Obviously, he's supposed to be, you know, a captain much older at this point. And that's the other thing that I thought was kind of funny. There's actually a line where he says, we've been on these streets, you know, cleaning these streets up for 25 years. And I'm like thinking to myself, like at 25 years, you guys would have been promoted or upgraded. It's similar to the lethal, lethal weapon thing in Lethal Weapon 4 when they were like, well, the department can't keep an insurance uh, policy on you guys out there on the street, so we got to promote you. And, you know, they thought they were getting promoted to lieutenants and I think they promoted them up to captains. But it's just like by now, Marcus and, and Mike should be not on the streets but you know that is what it is one thing that i did enjoy uh was the introduction of the new blood essentially the ammo team led by paula nunez's character they did a good job uh, vanessa hudgens who vanessa hudgens is always is an interesting uh actress to me i i enjoy seeing her in the films that she's in she's you know of course a nice attractive young girl but she's always seems to be playing the tough girl um, which actually kind of works for her, I mean, for whatever reason. Because, I mean, in Sucker Punch, I enjoyed, I liked her in Sucker Punch, so seeing her in Bad Boys for Life was actually pretty cool. Uh, of course, there's an a-hole character that is uh, essentially Mike's younger self, so to speak, or an opposite of him. And there's a uh, playing against type computer nerd character who it looks like they got, you know, a really big buff actor to play the uh, the computer nerd guy. So it was actually really cool. I, I enjoyed the ammo team. I had fun with those character introductions. And of course the the initial tension and then eventually it's like, look, you guys gotta work together in order to get the things done. So I thought that was actually really well done. So Bad Boys for Life, I got it uh, 4K. I got it at Best Buy with the steel book. So again, steel books are cool. I'm gonna leave you guys with these final words. For many of you out there, when you saw the first Bad Boys movie, you were blown away. You saw the second one, even more blown away, but a little bit kind of skeptical of just how over the top it was becoming. So then when you heard years later that they were gonna finally do a Bad Boys 3, a lot of you got kind of excited, but kind of were reserved a bit because it's like, has it been too long? Or is it maybe the feeling of it's about time? So a lot of you were kind of skeptical about this movie, but a lot of you enjoyed this movie. And I'm right there with you, I definitely enjoyed it. So, there's a sequel possibility coming up with the way this film was ended. There is an, a, a uh, after, well not even end credits, a mid credit sequence. So check that out. But remember, for me, it was Tuesday. I'll see you guys next time. If you're enjoying our content, please consider going to our Patreon and becoming a supporter. There are different tiers to select from, and we thank you for your support. Culture Junkies!